Good morning. Morning, morning. How y'all doing? It's a beautiful day. I'm well. I'm doing good today. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello. What's up, Susie? Yes, it's a great day for a walk. I actually like to jog, but in between my jog, I will walk, such as I am right now. Good morning. How are you? Hey, thank you. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Stay strong. Absolutely. Our strength comes from the grace of God. The wind is picking up a little bit here. So it might sound windy on your end, but it's not too bad. Let's see if I can cover up the speaker here a little bit. How is everybody? Oh, I love you too. So kind. Yes, I enjoy running. I don't run fast. I don't really run for a record or anything, but I like to run about 12 or 13 miles per hour. <laughs> That's my average according to my Nike Run app. Yes, absolutely. And I'll typically run or jog. I'm not a runner. I just like moving my body. I will typically jog two and a half to three and a half miles, three or four times a week. Of course, you don't have to do that. I'm not saying you do, but I like it. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. I'm so glad my posts help you. It's different when you follow a ministry that's centered around Jesus, isn't it? When we get rid of all that extra stuff that's just not necessary, all the stuff that creates anxiety as a Christian, stress, competitiveness, and we rest in who we are in Christ, man, for me, that seems to have been the secret formula to enjoying my life as a Christian. I'll be 40 this year, and I really did not understand the grace of God until about 32, 33 years old. That's when it really started to catch on because I'm a type A personality. I'm extremely competitive. Competition has nothing to do with the gospel. And that was hard for me to grasp because I worked harder than everybody else. Worked harder. Heavy on the quotations. Got up earlier than you. Read more scripture than you. Went to church more than you. Helped the pastor out more than you. None of that stuff matters. <laughs> But it was when I took that competitiveness and I began to apply that to resting, whew, that's when it started to make sense. So if you're struggling with being competitive as a Christian in order to earn something or to sustain something, you can rest. There was a scripture in Hebrews 4 which really changed my outlook, and it's Hebrews 4.11, and it says, strive to enter rest. Strive to enter rest. Good morning. How are you? So that Bible passage in Hebrews chapter 4, strive to enter rest? What? 
What's that mean? That's what I asked God. Strive to enter rest? Strive to rest. Work hard at resting. That's it. Work hard at resting. So, in context, the author of Hebrews was talking to the most competitive people on planet Earth, the Jews, the Hebrews. They were in competition with all of humanity, the Gentiles, and even one another. They were working hard to sustain righteousness, to earn righteousness, to please God. And the author was telling them, y'all need to work hard at resting. Your ancestors refused to rest and they wandered in the wilderness. So you, all you have to do is rest in the grace of God by believing in Jesus. So it's applicable for anybody today who is working hard at impressing God. You don't have to impress God. You're already impressive. If you want to impress God, place your faith in Christ for salvation one time, just once. You don't have to rededicate yourself. That's what the Jews thought they had to do. Rededication is Judaism light. <laughs> when John the Baptist was in the wilderness, he was having the Jews rededicate themselves to the law. Repent and be baptized. That's what John taught, but he was telling them to repent. And we're talking about John the Baptist, not John the Apostle, John the Disciple. He was telling them to repent back toward following the law better. And then he would baptize them as a sign of rededication. But they were all tired of it. There was going to be somebody who came along much better than John the Baptist much better than anything that had to do with the law of Moses. And his name was Jesus. Jesus did all the dedication necessary. Morning. Jesus was more committed than you'll ever be. No disrespect, but your commitment is a joke. No disrespect, I said. And I say that to you because I used to say I'm more committed than you. My commitment was a joke. Christianity is not about our commitment to God. Our commitment is trash. No disrespect. Everybody's commitment to God is subpar because God requires perfect commitment. God requires absolute perfection on your part and we don't have the ability to do that but Jesus did Jesus was so committed he lived a spotless perfect holy blameless righteous life 100% and he didn't deserve death <laughs> you did <laughs> I did. But because of his commitment, you get to rest. You get to rest. Oh, man, that's good news. So, if, hang on. Hang on just a second. morning sorry my phone was my app was telling me how far I had walked and how fast and I can't stop it and I can't hear anything else so anyway commitment don't worry about being committed you're not going to hear that from many ministries definitely not going to hear it from most pulpits, shouldn't say all, because there are some pastors and some churches and some teachers and some ministries who truly understand the grace of God 
and they're out there. By the way, a little plug here. If you want to connect to some of those ministries, I have a Facebook group called Freedom in Christ Movement. That's Freedom in Christ Movement. And I have assembled, assembled, sorry, I'm getting out of breath here. I have assembled a group of New Covenant teachers who truly understand the grace of God. There's about 40 on there. And join my Facebook group. Lots of good teaching. Lots of good ministries. Podcasters, authors, regular people like me, business owners, um, real estate agents, teachers, retired teachers, uh, from all around the world, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, London, on the other side of the pond, everywhere. Check it out. Freedom in Christ movement. Got a lot of people on there that could really help you out. Okay. So, just want to jump on here and encourage you guys for a minute or two. Hope you enjoyed that. Did not have time to read all the comments here, so I'm sorry. But if you want to contact me, you can always email me. My email address is matt at mattmcmillan.com. That's M-A-T-T at M-A-T-T-M-C-M-I-L-L-E-N.com. Shoot me an email. Shoot me an email if something's on your mind. I'll be glad to interact with you. I'm not unreachable. I'm not untouchable. That was another thing when I didn't understand God's grace. I lifted up all these people, celebrity Christians, try to contact them. Even a pastor in a church I went to could not get them to respond to me. And I was like, you know, if I ever had the opportunity to have a platform when people reach out to me, I'm going to respond. So shoot me an email. If you can't remember my email address, you can always go to my website, go to the contact page and be glad to talk to you then. But anyway, thanks for going on this brief walk with me. I'm actually going to start running now and I can't run and talk at the same time. So you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.